dismantling of e-waste is not a complicated or difficult task. It's labor intensive and it requires a number of lengthy mechanical separation processes. But frankly, it can be done very safely, very cleanly, with virtually no waste and no water pollution. The World Economic Forum has named Sims Recycling Solutions one of the most sustainable corporations in the world. One of their wind-powered recycling plants is an hour's drive from San Francisco in Roseville, California. Close to a half a million pounds a month of material that, that can go to smelters to be uh, for the precious metals recovery. We have a three-stage reduction before separation. So the first thing that happens is material is dumped into our primary shredder, which reduces the material down into four inch pieces. After that, it gets conveyed up to our secondary shredder, which reduces the material down into two inch pieces. And there it goes into our granulator. Um, in our granulation, during the granulation process, you have some pretty big knives that, that go and they, they cut up the material until it can fit through a, a screen of a certain size. Uh, after the fine screen, the material is conveyed underneath a, an overband magnet where the steel is extracted. And then after that, the material is ran over an eddy current belt uh, where the non-ferrous metals are separated from the plastics. Each part of a CRT monitor would be broken down into pure commodity streams. Uh, each stream is going to go to a glass-to-glass -glass recycler or for lead recovery. They'll take the material, they'll process it down to get the gold recovery, get the copper recovery, the platinum and palladiums, a few other precious metals. Our process is essentially an above-ground mining process. How are you doing? It's great. How are Good. You? Good. Before materials are processed by machines, workers must carefully sort out components too hazardous to be shredded. Ink, mercury bulbs, mercury boards, and they'll put those into individual sorts. All other material is separated by type. And so that way we have a cleaner steel stream, that, that way that goes straight to our metals yard, doesn't need to be ground up. And then we have you know, other stuff next to it that's going to be ground up. We could make a lot more money if we decided to throw this material into a container and ship it off to a developing country where, where the labor is so much cheaper. Thousands of dollars of difference by sending it off to China versus sending it to us. If it was 40,000 pounds of circuit boards, they may be able to get, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 more. It's a volume-driven business, uh, so the more volume you bring in, the better you'll do. You have a lot of fixed costs. To go and do this in a more responsible manner, there's a big capital investment in the equipment that we've purchased that makes it worth it. A lot of state legislation it gets, gets passed here and there like they did with the SB50 program. Because it makes economic sense for them, they can take that material, pay for it, and then they can turn around, throw it into a container, and get paid even more money off that by sending that off to China or somewhere else.